It's as simple as this. Just when they think they've got the answers, I change the what culture. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything, but people get overexcited about stuff coming back, regardless of the personal feelings involved or whether that thing still really has a place there. Ding. Hello, I'm Adam, hailing from Parts Fun Known, and welcome to how Adam would book the return to WWE of CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. CM. It gets annoying after a while. Tricky one this because honestly, I don't think Punk should return to WWE. First of all, I don't think he'd be happy there, at least not with Vince still around. If you have the luxury to not work somewhere that you don't think would make you happy, nine times out of 10, it's a good idea to not do that. Second, right now at the age of 42, with over seven years out of the game, the biggest weapon in Punk's arsenal is that He's not around. He quit in his prime. How many wrestlers can say that? His aura of being gone, his Schrodinger's punk sensation of being both the hero who definitely will absolutely save wrestling, an anarchist symbol whose name is wielded to send a message to the powerful, or a despicable villain who turned his back on the fans. All of that sensation goes away as soon as he comes back and feuds with The Miz for 20 straight weeks. Honestly, and this will set me out as an AEW mark, and I haven't been bought and paid for by Tony Khan. I've been bought and paid for by Surfshark, thank you very much, which we'll get to. Honestly, the best way that I think Punk can contribute to wrestling right now is to go to AEW. Gift them that huge attention-grabbing moment to build them up even more and put the pressure on WWE to f***ing improve. Also, Punk versus MJF would be good. Thank you. It is a tricky one, but this topic was chosen by our patrons, patreon.com forward slash parts for unknown, and I have sworn an oath of fealty to them, so I shall book it. But first, the Who the Hell is CM Punk Super Fun Roundup 2021, brought to you by Surfshark. How many CM Punk references can I crowbar into a promotional spot? Let's count the ways. Does the fact that giant multimedia companies region lock their content put you in a CM Funk? Are you unable to go to sleep without your nightly viewing of a classic Jennifer Lopez snake film that you can only watch on UK Netflix? Well, satisfy your Anaconda vice with Surfshark, who are providing a voice to the voiceless and allowing you secure and encrypted access to servers in over 60 countries. They're the best in the world at providing secure VPN protocols and maintaining a strict no-logs policy that prevents companies from logging their users' data, you know, like CM Punk does. You can also use them to make sure you get a fair deal as you shop online, so whether you're after a shipment of ice cream bars or taking the plunge on a crate of Pepsi, make sure you're not suffering location-specific price gouging by heading over to Surfshark at surfshark.deals forward slash jamnatjam. Use promo code jamnatjam to get 83% off and three months for free. That again is surfshark.deals forward slash jamnatjam. Use promo code jamnatjam for 83% off and three months for free. Do I have everybody's attention now? So CM Punk had five main stages in his WWE life. First of all, he was cool mid-carder punk, debuting in WWE ECW in 2006, quickly becoming the only thing on the brand that even slightly resembled the once one-stop shop for extreme charismatic indie darlings. After a few attempts, he won the WWE ECW Championship, which is and always will be a mid-card title, before winning the Money in the Bank briefcase and being drafted to Raw in 2008. Eight. Then began the era of Championship Misery Punk, where he won the World Heavyweight Championship twice, and both times. Well, each reign had their own problems. Reign one was a fucking straight up disaster. Uh, he pinned Edge for the belt. His defense against Batista at the Great American Bash ended in double DQ. He retained against JBL, of all people, at SummerSlam, and then lost it at Unforgiven, being kicked in the head, which meant he was stripped of the belt before he even had a chance to compete in the championship scramble match to defend it, leaving the only nice thing about that reign is that it lasted 69 days. His second reign in 2009 was a bit better. He won it again using Money in the Bank from Jeff Hardy. Punk Hardy was feud of the year and gave a straight edge asshole punk, but then he was regularly humiliated by The Undertaker Thanks for coming. But Punk did stay straight edge, morphing into Charles Manson Punk, a purity obsessed cult leader who turned Festus into Luke Gallows. Thank you for that. And introduced the world to Serena Deeb. 
thank you for that. He also did cool things like shave audience members' heads and sing happy birthday to Rey Mysterio's daughter. Punk would then downgrade factions, becoming the boss of the new Nexus, which is about as prestigious as being the boss of a zoo that calls itself a zoo, but it's actually a box full of dead squirrels. However, one pipe bomb later, we got certified main eventer Punk, who won the WWE title at one of the greatest WWE pay-per-views of all time, this one, and had a run of excellent matches against Cena, none of which he really won clean, but then he lost the title at SummerSlam, lost to Triple H, don't know why. He won the WWE title, holding it 434 days, but only main eventing five pay-per-views, which, you know, more than AJ Styles got. Bad luck, idiot. And then they went with John Cena versus The Rock for two straight WrestleMania main events. Didn't put CM Punk in the main event of Mania 29, even though he super, super wanted it. And after a combination of things like misdiagnosing a staph infection, booking him against Triple H at Mania, again, not in the main event, he became cheerio mother as Punk, going home after the Royal Rumble in 2014 with all hopes of reconciliation seemingly dashed when the company accidentally fired him on his wedding day. Again, why wouldn't he want to work there? But work there, he must. WWE, do it better. I mean, it's easy, isn't it? Just have him come back. Put him in some high profile matches, main events and pay-per-views against stars that have been made in his absence. Don't have him do embarrassing shit and make some money. All right, good night, everybody. Okay, fine. Look, I'm, I wasn't even really joking. Like, don't get me wrong, at its day-to-day -day level, running episodic wrestling television is really hard. I've, I've tried it. But honestly, booking marquee talent talent that's already over isn't. Make a fight you want to sell, know what that fight is. Don't give away the fight you want to sell on TV. Build anticipation to the fight by introducing personal stakes that don't diminish either star. Pay-per-view, repeat. Like you don't have to come up with a huge invasion angle or a huge new faction for CM Punk or a massive convoluted Infinity War style crossover story to make money off a CM Punk return. It's a CM Punk. So look, here's what I would do. I'm gonna run through one general overarching storyline, cover about a year of WWE programming featuring CM Punk being back, a string of pay-per-view matches to sell, why I've chosen specific opponents based on Punk's history, what his character would likely be after all his time away, and the general professional relationship between Punk and WWE. And if you want more than that, right here, here it is. That's for you to keep. So we actually start at Survivor Series this year. Survivor Series 2021 and WWE are doing what WWE does, which is mark an arbitrary anniversary with a celebration to pop a rating rather than make the show must see based on events of previous television. I'm being cheeky, but it's also what they do all the time. This celebration, 25 years of The Rock. 25 years of the eyebrow-beating, pie-raising, jabroni-eating, most electronic man in all of Sponk's entertainment, Dwayne the Dwayne Dwayne. Comes out, sets his name on fire, gives, I don't know, AJ Styles the rock bottom, because that's what they do. And he gets on a live mic to address the millions of The Rock's fans. Out comes still Universal Champion Roman Reigns. No, I'm the head of the table. Dog, Spear, Concerto, goodbye to The Rock for a bit. Fast forward to the Royal Rumble Universal Championship match. Roman versus, while we're making stuff up, Big E. What about that push? <laughs> Did you forget WWE? You forgot, didn't you? Roman wins as he's celebrating. The Rock returns, gives Roman the rock bottom, points at the WrestleMania sign, bangs his chest, probably. It's gonna be Rock versus Roman at Mania. Later in the night, though, the main event, the Men's Royal Rumble match at number 30, returns. Do 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 boom boom do 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 do. Yeah, look, a Royal Rumble return is basic, but also really fun. CM Punk wins the Royal Rumble, his first Royal Rumble, I might add, punching his ticket to Mania. So what is CM Punk like now that he's back? I know a lot of people are going to want the old CM Punk back, cool babyface punk with cool babyface promos, but look, mutton chop babyface punk is not the most interesting version of him. In fact, it might be the least interesting version 
of CM Punk. There's gonna be a lot of fan support for him whenever he does come back. And I'm not saying you should try and fly in the face of that immediately, but you can't just ignore everything that's happened in the last seven years and what that would do to a person. What would it be like to come back to a company after such a split, like reasons why you left? And some of them, namely that millionaire who should be a billionaire and his doofus son-in-law are still very much around. I want CM Punk to be angry all the time, but the kind of anger that poisons you. So the journey starts off with, yeah, you tell him CM Punk and ends with, Oh no, CM Punk's gone crazy. At the very top of the first roar after the Rumble, WWE announced that The Rock will go one-on-one -on -one with Roman Reigns to headline WrestleMania 38. The main event of that same roar will be CM Punk addressing the fans for the first time in what by this point will be eight years. The moment comes, Punk sits cross-legged in the middle of the ring and says, I have been back for one day, one day, and Dwayne is in the main event of WrestleMania again. This company, this is what they do. They lure you in, they place a contract in front of you, they throw money at you, and oh yes, it was a ridiculous amount of money, by the way, but nothing ever changes. Well, never fear, because right now, I have more power in this company than I ever had, and that's not because of you, by the way, chanting CM Punk, it's because I, won the Royal Rumble, which means I get the title shot of my choosing and I will be in the main event of WrestleMania because that is what I am owed. It's gonna be Rock versus Roman versus CM Punk. Because that's the CM Punk I'm interested in seeing. Someone who, after all this time, after hating WWE, having received a ton of backlash from the fans about it, doesn't care about anyone. Doesn't care about the fact that Roman versus The Rock one-on-one -on -one is the money match, makes the most sense, has the better story. He doesn't care about that. He's gonna ruin it because he doesn't care. And he can. Out comes Triple H. Triple H and Punk, face to face. One of the reasons why Punk left. Triple H says, I told him this would happen. I knew this would happen. Punk, welcome back. The WWE Champion will gladly fight you at WrestleMania. The Rock versus Roman is going ahead as planned, and if you don't like it, you can take your ball and go home. And we'll carry on, just like we did last time. Punk raises the microphone to his mouth, smashes Triple H in the face with it, wails on him, hits him with a GTS, and leaves him lying, saying, maybe I will. See you around. Maybe. And then we don't see CM Punk again for weeks because I wouldn't want to see him every week. He's a special attraction now. They're hard to get, keep him as one. And besides, it's almost a game now. Fans versus Punk, he baits them, they wait for him. Keep playing that game. Let them chant in vain because he doesn't care about them in storyline. I'm sure he loves each and every one of you very dearly in real life. In the meantime, WWE keeps promoting WrestleMania 38's main event as being Rock versus Roman one on one. And people have no idea what's happening with Punk. Before Fastlane, Punk returns, reiterates that it will be him versus Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania. He says he knows what everyone's thinking. It's gonna be him versus Triple H. He says he's got no problem kicking Triple H's ass, but he'll do it on his terms. How about Fastlane? We've got that show coming up, right? Not a stage big enough for Triple H though, but if he's willing to put his ego aside, I'll fight him there. However, Triple H doesn't answer his challenge, Seth Rollins does. See, way back when Punk first appeared on WWE backstage, Rollins was straight in there with the Fight Me CM Punk tweet. And he's straight in there now. It's also worth pointing out that we don't see Triple H on TV at any point this year. I will tell you when we next see him. Punk versus Rollins is set for Fastlane. His first match back, I'd like to see it. Don't know about you, Punk wins. Of course. On SmackDown after Fastlane, Punk again announces he will be in the main event of Mania, and this time, Paul Heyman walks out to meet him. Paul raises the microphone to his mouth, and Punk just attacks him, no words. Decimates Paul Heyman without saying one thing, and leaves. Roman then answers the challenge. It's on. Rock, Roman, Punk. Promos before Mania focus on Punk's anger that Roman's always been the guy, or that The Rock can just waltz in and take a spot whenever he wants. The Rock harkens back to the time he beat Punk twice. The Rock and Roman have their personal beef. There's a lot of stuff to work with, arguably too much, but hey, The Rock's 49, 
Punk will be 43 by then. And also, triple threat main events of WrestleMania rule with no exceptions. So eat it. WrestleMania rolls around because it's in Texas. Please have a backstage promo with Austin and Punk, with Punk reminding Austin that he took his ball and went home once. Does he remember that? Then the main event, the triple threat, and CM Punk pins The Rock to become Universal Champion. So, we've got Punk as champion. We've got an overarching story now to build over the coming year. And then the rest of the booking is create some feuds that would really suit Punk's strengths and shift some tickets. See, all of this is still not enough for Punk. He's champion, he got what he wanted, main event of WrestleMania, but now he knows the company is gonna screw him. Somehow, he's paranoid, just waiting for the other shoe to drop. He says he'll show up to defend the title, but only when it's guaranteed he's the main event of the paper. You're not gonna put my title reign in the middle of the card like last time. He works just slightly more than a part-time schedule. Don't like it? Doesn't matter, jerks. I'm the champion. Chant my name. See how far that gets you. He feuds with Reigns, but retains owing to miscommunication from the Usos, which leads to Roman turning on them, which will lead to Rock coming back down the road. Punk then feuds with Kevin Owens. I want those promos. I don't want them bad. Both are anti-heroes. Both have a history of hating the McMahon family, but KO never left. Their comparative histories in Ring of Honor, there's a lot to draw on there. Punk versus Owens at Money in the Bank. Punk retains and we head into SummerSlam where you can do the Rock versus Roman singles match if you really wanna. I mean, it would be fun, wouldn't it? With the Universal title match being CM Punk versus if he's back in the company by this point, Daniel Bryan, because I want it, I want it. But if Bryan's left and hasn't come back, first of all, good for you. And second of all, I will very gladly take Punk versus Edge. That would also be okay. As his reign goes on, Punk gets more and more unhinged. His hair grows longer. He starts to give off a real Howard Hughes vibe, clutching the title close to him, seeing people out to get him at every turn. He's been betrayed by everyone he's ever loved. He misses more and more time from weekly programming. His next feud is against Cesaro at Survivor Series, and for God's sake, pull the trigger on Cesaro. Punk would be the perfect guy to put Tony over. Both guys are intrinsically linked with this brass ring of management narrative. Cesaro respects Punk because he overcame that system, but also Punk has become a detriment to the only thing that Cesaro loves more than clocks and chocolate, and that's wrestling. Cesaro beats Punk, becomes Universal Champion, when Triple H makes his return and clatters Punk with a sledgehammer, which sends Punk's mania into overdrive. And now he's the one that wants Triple H. And over the next few months, it gets way too personal. Punk lays out Vince with a GTS, hospitalizes Shane. And at one point, have a segment where AJ Lee comes back to help Punk attack Stephanie McMahon. All this real life and kayfabe mixing together, all that hatred builds to Punk versus Triple H at Mania 39, career versus career. Whoever loses walks away from the ring forever. And it's just, it's just too much fun. One of the straws that broke the camel's back in 2014 being the end point of this story. Triple H versus Punk at Mania. Of course, CM Punk wins and Triple H retires because it's retiring time. And that's how I would book CM Punk's return to WWE. Did you hate it? Or did you like it? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around if you did enjoy it and subscribe to Parts of Unknown for more silly wrestling content. And if you would like to be part of choosing the next topic for my fantasy booking videos, head on over to patreon.com forward slash parts of unknown and cast your vote there. Thanks for watching everyone. See you for the next one. Jam that jam.